Okay, great. So just explain a little bit how it will be. We uh, we don't have actually a very interactive uh, mirror or morally um, template. So uh, Ivan and Andrea from Dine, they will be present, facilitating the session and presenting it. And then at the end, we'll have a time for some questions and discussions. So I will just, I'll wait. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi, Andrea. Hi. I think you can start, right? Yeah, I think so. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, but yeah, okay, let's do it. So welcome to the session, guys. I hope everybody is enjoying the FabEx Live Conference. Um, I am Milena. I am project coordinator of Reflow at IAC, that is the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. And I will give a very brief introduction to Reflow project before leaving the floor to Ivan and Andrea from Dine Organization. We will actually facilitate the session. Uh, Ivan, if you can share your screen, I think it will be better for them to follow what I'm talking about. Can you guys see the screen? Yes, great. Yes. Cool. If you can make it bigger. Yeah, one second. Cool, thank you. So um, Reflow is a Ryzen 2020 project. Um, composed by 27 organizations spread over 10 European cities. It started in 2019 and will last until 2022. And it seeks to understand and transform urban material flows at different levels. So from this understanding, we will believe that can, we can co-create and test sustainable strategies for circular economy involving municipalities, small and medium sized enterprises, citizens and also innovation spaces such as fab labs, maker spaces and creative hubs. And mm -hmm. that's why Reflow is participating in this conference. <laughs> we believe that fab labs and maker spaces are not only crucial uh, innovative spaces that can support the relocalization of productions back to the city, but we understand that its communities are fundamental to reach this transition to circular economy in a collaborative way. If you can go to the next slide. I just have two of them, great. So we follow an action research approach, which allows us to map, understand the main needs and create iterative prototype and solutions to address the challenge uh, that cities are facing to become more circular and regenerative. So in Reflow, we work with six pilot cities, that is Amsterdam, Berlin, cluj napoca in Romania, Milan, Paris, and Weil in Denmark. And all of them integrate uh, a productive making, let's say, approach that, as everybody here may know, we empower, uh, that empowers citizens, engage also with policymakers and industry leaders as very uh, key actors in this transition, in collaborating to find solutions that inspire and guide other urban areas in transitioning, transitioning to circular uh, cities. So it's a very broad and um, explanation what Everflow is. If you want to know more about it, uh, I will be sharing here our website. We also have all the social media. And we have a, a public forum that is really interesting. If you, after the, um, the, the session today, we can keep the conversation there. We already have the space open this, in this forum. I will uh, share the forum here with you guys. And then you can also uh, just register to the forum and that will be, I will have access to it. So today we have Ivan and Andrea from Dine explaining a bit about the Reflow West, uh, an economic, economic peer to peer network that, in collaboration with other uh, Reflow members, will be developed and, and tested in the next years. So, Ivan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Milena. So, um, both uh, me and Andrea work with uh, Dine. And Dine is a foundation and a collective of makers uh, with the mission of facilitate artists, creatives, and uh, activists, uh, engaged citizens, sharing tool practices and narratives for community empowerment and creation and management. Um, some of our links include our website at dine.org, 
if you want to write us a line, uh, you can do it at info at dime.org or follow us on Twitter. Since we release all our code open source, of course, you can reach us on uh, GitHub at Dyne uh, organization. Uh, during several years, we participated with uh, several organization and other uh, um, developer building uh, several uh, products and software. Among uh, the others, uh, recently we built, share, and curate Zerum that also Andrea will talk uh, in a bit later during the, this workshop and show us a demo. That is a library to perform end-to-end -end, uh, encryption and the ability to create and execute smart contract in a human readable way. And we will discover why it is important also for the circular economy and reflow. Also that one, that is a fork of D uh, Debian, a Linux distro without systemd. The code OS, that is one of the software produced during the, the code uh, project, another European project, that um, is meant to create, uh, it's an operative system that means to create anonymous, anonymous uh, network and private network hidden by Tor, that will also be used uh, under the Reflow OS, and the social wallet, that is a um, software written enclosure to design and manage social currencies, make it both by a traditional uh, database, but also uh, with a blockchain behind. And now uh, we are working as work package leader in uh, developing the infrastructure and the development of the Reflow OS uh, infrastructure and software. The Reflow OS, as Milena also said, um, is a federated and secure economic network that helps the creation and management and coordination of value chain across municipalities or networks in general. And this uh, talk will explain and cut um, uh, this sentence, try to understand the general vision and the main components and use cases of the Reflow OS. But before starting explaining to you what is the Reflow OS and what are the main components, uh, it's important for us to explain um, what uh, drive us when designing infrastructure for communities, what are our vision and, and needs. Of course, the main and principle is that we don't think, neither uh, pretend of fixing cities or communities through software. We don't think that there is anything to fix, but our goal is to empower and create a diverse tool to uh, create more freedoms and the ability to create an experiment with different form of governance, different form of economic uh, uh, system, existing communities, and facilitate the creation of uh, new communities. Of course, one of our main goals in order to do that is to give the ability to communities to keep the ownership and the control over the data that they produce. Um, data that in uh, a lot of cases is also the value that a community can produce because um, data can be further analyzed and being able to empower a community and take better decisions or better strategies uh, in the future. But also we don't think that a community should be a uh, silos independent from uh, uh, the rest of the world. In fact, we want to empower communities, uh, giving the ability to federate with other groups, with other communities in the network, creating networks and network of networks. So, uh, always keeping the data in control, but being able to share data and uh, information and activities through different silos, through different nodes in this network. All of this, uh, always developing uh, free software and relying on standard protocols and encryption rather than creating new standards uh, and focusing on developing human readable smart contract. Uh, one thing that uh, it was really important that we discovered recently during one of our discussion with other partner in the Reflow consortium is that uh, even if several partners are working on different dimensions of circular economies. For example, other, uh, some we are focusing on the technical aspect, other 
in um, analyzing the material flow of our pilots and other partners uh, is focusing on community engagement uh, engagement others in uh, governance and the end we, we discovered that really are core features and a core aspect in building and uh, developing a circular economic uh, economic strategy is about governance and uh, this was a kind of uh, revelation maybe also not really uh, weird revelation but we decided to focus a lot on governance also on our economic platform mostly giving the ability to mix social and economic activities together and so to discuss about any kind of um, upon any kind of activities not only uh, discussing by doing gossip like mostly uh, most of the social network uh, right now but also being able to discuss and reach decision on top of um, different kind of activities in order to empower coordination and human uh, interaction through softwares. Um, now, uh, uh, if you're interested, we could have a brief tour of the Reflow OS uh, in their technical aspect and main components. The Reflow OS is not a monolith software, but is a plethora of software tied together and working together combined in order to uh, perform, uh, to create this um, economic network. The main software that compose uh, the Reflow OS are the, the Code OS, Zenroom, and Commons Pub. The Code OS, um, as I said, is an operating system that is able to create and deploy a private and anonymous network in which um, stakeholders and agents can exchange in total uh, anonymity. Zenroom instead is the cryptographic library to create smart contract and ensure that the data is safe and, crypt and encrypted. Compose Pub instead is a generic federated server that can mix uh, social with economic activities together. We also are using protocols and vocabularies that are quite important for us, one of these is ActivityPub that you may have heard of if you are using a social network like uh, Pleroma or Mastodon or PixelFed that is an open source alternative to uh, Instagram and so on. It allows the creation of federated uh, um, networks. And VeluFlows that is a powerful economic vocabulary that allows to put in relation uh, different economic activities that happen through a network and create uh, economic graph. We are now used to the word of a social graph, thanks to Facebook. But uh, the idea is to empower this social graph through economic activities, creating a really interconnected and wide range of activities that talk to each other, both on a social and an economical uh, aspect. And Zencode. Zencode is the language uh, through which we can create a human readable uh, smart contract in uh, Zenroom. Uh, you may um, ask yourself uh, why there is not the blockchain, why, where, where the fuck is the blockchain, why you are not mentioned yet blockchain. And the answer is that uh, thanks mostly to Zenroom, blockchain is not a core aspect, a core feature, but is an implementation detail. We may or may not decide to plug a blockchain in the middle of our architecture and our infrastructure, deciding case by case and not driven by um, technology or a uh, hype. Um, in fact, uh, we choose to base our main software with, in activity, uh, on the ActivityPub protocol, that is a V3C standard with growing adoption and a lot of apps in uh, production with more than 1,000 of, of uh, users. But there is also a more political reason behind this, and is that we want to keep the freedom of mixing or uh, alternating between global consensus provided by a distributed ledger like a blockchain and federated governance that can come uh, using more federated protocols like ActivityPub, deciding um, case by case. Um, this is because we, as you may have understood, we love federation and confederation on all the different wide uh, level, both on a political, technical and social level, like our old friends, uh, Murai Bookchin, also. 
given this uh, technical overview of the main component of Reflow S, it can be interesting to discover what are the use cases or the main features that uh, can be used for. As uh, every network, the first thing that is possible to do is to create uh, such networks. So communities like Fab Labs, uh, Act Labs, or universities, or any kind of groups can create both a permissioned or a public and open network. What are the differences? The public network uh, is, uh, as I said, open and discoverable through the classic uh, web, through a browser. So for in this case, for example, a FabLab can create an account or a user of a FabLab can create its own account like you do on Twitter or uh, on uh, Mastodon or deploy uh, its own server, its own instance that represent the instance, the house of the FabLab and can start directly without any permission to interact with uh, the wide open network. So can start following other groups or user engaging in different kind of economic activities that we will discover in a while, discussing on top of anything. And as I said, the network is open, so it's explorable for the web also, given the possibility to non-logged users to guests to get an overview of what happened uh, inside the network also if they are not uh, logged in. This approach can have pros and cons like uh, everything. And it may be useful uh, if the network wants to incentivize the citizen or other kind of agents engagement within the network. So start interacting with also with other type of uh, kind of stakeholders, but also can be useful to promote their activities also outside the closed circle of the network and also to spread the adoption. But of course, there are other use cases in which such uh, visibility is not a pro. And so you may want to create a permissioned network. Uh, in order to create a permissioned network, there is the need of a pre-established entity, like a consortium, a network itself, a cooperative and so on, that agree on uh, governance rules in order to be part, to be invited to the network and emit uh, invites, share invites with uh, the others. Any activity, is uh, hidden within the network itself. So it's not reachable from the outside. Non participants, so people that are not invited to the network, are even not aware of anything that happened within the network because it's not reachable through the web as it's um, implemented under Tor. This also has its own pros and cons, and it may be useful if basically you want to make your own business or you want to share private and confidential information that is not needed that other kind of stakeholders can share or acknowledge. And also if they want to create private economic agreements and exchange. Once the network decided if it wants to be private or uh, public, they can start interacting within the participants in a classic, more or less social ways. So they can create and moderate groups like in Reddit, for example. They can follow other users and have a different kind of meaningful discussion. So this is still the social aspect of uh, such network. But then also they can start mixing uh, economic activities so they can publish, discuss and match together offers and needs. What does it mean in, uh, in practice? Uh, offers and needs can be about anything, can be about um, a needs for a specific materials or a skill, an offer of a service that one can provide, or a tangible or intangible resources, like an intangible resources can be a design or a graphic um, uh, file, etc. For example, one can need four boards of a solid, a solid oak with specific measures, or they can need uh, a skill of a person that is skilled in uh, programming or doing a, for a workshop. Others can offer a quantity of cotton on another materials or an hardware like a Raspberry Pi. Of course, it would be not really useful if the user can only specify <clears throat> what they need or what they want to offer. Of course, they can also customize and add food uh, further details to such offers and needs, adding geolocation, hashtag like categories or taxonomy, 
due date of the offers or the needs and other um, things. For example, uh, this uh, half monkey, half wolf, uh, need four boards of a solid uh, oak with specific measures, and but uh, he can add a further discussion. For example, a minimum uh, available of a uh, minimum number of boards and can be also in good shape or not really in good shape, but uh, it can be without holes. It can specify the location where he lives uh, in order to reach the other uh, person and the due date and also, as I said, the hashtag. Once these needs and offers are published, they can be searched through the network. They can be filtered by hashtag, by due date or location, saved like bookmarked and also creating discussion on top of it. Since um, we live uh, in a federated network, the user that want to offer on search for specific offers and needs can filter if wants to search within the instance or in a broader federated network. For example, if I'm, I'm a participant in a fab lab, I can search before for skills or uh, materials within my instance that is my own fab labs. If the, um, what I'm looking for is not present in my instance, so in my fab lab, I can extend the search through the whole federated network. So offers and needs can be also discussed, as I said, and here is where it's mixed economic with social aspect. So different kind of uh, actors can reply to the initial needs with, for example, offers like I have one piece of solid dog. It's not really a perfect shape uh, as you want, but maybe uh, the wood is pretty new, so it may be useful also if not match perfectly your needs. The, the other person can reply or accept the offer and others can join, can jump uh, in the discussion, giving other information or other offers that can be um, matched together. And so at this point you may say, yeah, this is all uh, pretty nice, but um, how does it differ from the several existing advertising platform that uh, are available in almost all the countries? Of course, the one of the main differences is that uh, it's open source and it's federated. So it's not a um, classic platform for exploiting data and uh, um, money and information out from the users. And it's federated, so uh, you can start within your uh, instance, within your server, and then connect to the others. It is baked by an economic vocabulary, and this has made a lot of a huge difference that we'll see in a while. Uh, and this meaning that you can create and follow a value chain across the network. And what this mean, practically? <clears throat> It means that any kind of transformation and transfer, and transfer that happens to resources are recorded and stored in the database uh, during the whole life cycle of the resource itself through economic events that shape and change the resource. In this example, for example, this uh, yellow health need a um, specific desk for an exhibition. So it, she is publishing a need for this desk, providing, for example, a photo or a 3D graphic design of a desk as she wants, and offered a reward in chain in, uh, for it. That can be money, alternative currencies, or there can be a subscription to a um, tool or any kind of uh, offer. Our old friend, uh, Af Monkey, Af uh, Wolf, um, is able to create this desk, so commit to build such desk, and they create an agreement, agreement that can be secured through a smart contract. Since they um, enter in an agreement, the, um, our friend can start buying the needed um, fish, uh, resources to build such desk. For example, two solid dock tables, glue, and some paint from uh, a goblin, and exchange with the uh, 65 social currencies. Then, it starts using tool like a laser cutter and the other resource that just bought and cited a table design to produce the desk. Uh, if you can see each hashtag and a verb is an, ac an economic activities that is stored into the system and then it allows to create the graph that we were talking before. Then the, um, the desk is transferred 
to the um, new owner. And it can end up here, but also at the end of the exhibition, the owner of the desk can decide that this, the, she doesn't need any more uh, the resources and so can offer to sell these resources to another person that can be able to recycle part of these resources into different things that then can put again in the circular economy um, ecosystem. So once the, she recycles the usable solid oak, she put another offer uh, for recycling solid oak tables that then can be accepted by another user and uh, keep the loop uh, going forward, moving forward. Here I showed you the loop that is in a very linear way. In the reality is everything but not linear. It's really more complex or interconnected and uh, of course circular in some ways. What I was saying before about the powerful of uh, an economic vocabulary like value flows is that any economic events that happen to a resource can be analyzed in relation with both previous and following events, defining what is called, uh, what we call in your flow, the network metabolism. So how resources are shaped and the travel of any resources material through the network in time and can enable the automatic creation of the material passport for resources produced within the network. The material passport that then can be printed as a um, QR code or a scanned uh, code that basically shows the life cycle of such resources. Also showing by which material is done, which person um, contributed to its creation and its recycling and so on. Any information that is previously stored within the network can be shown in this material passport that can be really useful also for explaining uh, circular economies to, uh, to people and citizens. <clears throat> uh, giving uh, more concretely, some use cases about network metabolism that can be done through uh, the Reflow OS software can be once uh, offers and needs are published and some economic exchange or activities are done within the networks, the network itself and, their, and the participants to the network can analyze both the scarcity and the abundance of resources and skill in the network. And this data uh, has a lot of value uh, within because with this uh, analysis, uh, the participants of the network can optimize and shape the existing resources flow that are happening already, but without really uh, knowledge of uh, the scarcity and abundance of resources. They can so uh, therefore reduce the material waste that is produced and also encar encourage the adoption of recycled materials. But also they um, can create ad hoc supply chain and coordinated supply chain across the several uh, actors and stakeholders within the network based on what is available and based also on the request. So what people need and what people say that they need or they want within the network. And also they can encourage uh, the citizen engagement or other kind of stakeholder engagement producing data visualization and also um, new narratives thanks to the tracked material life, uh, life cycles about what is happening within the networks and then the network is a representation digital representation of cities neighborhoods or physical uh, areas geographical areas And this is all about the Reflow OS side. And if you have any question, or I would be like to give the word to Andrea for a showcase and a demo of Xerum, uh, one of our core tools for the network. There are some questions here. Yeah, who is talking? Yeah, so I'm Pradnya. Yes, I am just uh, pointing out that only. There are some questions in the chat. So if you answer, it would be great. So the first question is from Rico, from Fabla Kamakura. Can I say it, Ivan? Yeah, uh, a great idea to have an electronic communication platform that is federated and safe from data mining, but who maintains and finance the system? <clears throat> um, 
Hi, Rico. And since it's uh, federated, the very concept and the idea of federated system is that any nodes finance uh, itself. So there is no need on a, of a centralized um, stakeholders or a centralized entity that finance and produce uh, for the system because given that it's decentralized and federated, the nodes need only to be resilient for themselves and try to cooperate with other nodes to reach this kind of uh, sustainability. This is also a huge and big topic because sustainability in the open source and circular economy is a hot topic. So for that side, I don't have any answer other than maybe giving the possibility to experiment and try different kind of economic system is something that can produce some result in that case. And the other is from Paul. Um, is this usable in the real world? Uh, is it available in a user-friendly multi-language installation? Does it allow for VAT in a transaction? And one of the reasons why we use uh, ActivityPub rather than a more experimental blockchain is that we really wanted to develop uh, and release something that can be usable after the project, the European project. So that was not really in a super experimental phase, but that can be used in a real world uh, contest. And IAC also is um, dealing with the user interface and the client application, and they are really capable. So I don't know if Milena wants to say something about it, but of course will be user friendly and available in um, uh, different languages. Um, in the first release, we will not uh, implement transactions. So we will not implement currencies, but only transfer and exchange between uh, materials and resources. So VAT in transaction is not something that will be taken in consideration in the first step, but that, that can eventually can be uh, implemented in, uh, uh, in the future. Uh, hi, so Pradnya again. Uh, so there is another question like, can we link it with Tablet iOS? It's asked by Eden. Um, I'm not aware of FabLabs IO, so I cannot <laughs> give you a, an answer right now, but we'll check it out. I think okay. if Guillaume is in the room, maybe he could help us. Yes, Guillaume, I'm talking to him in the chat. <laughs> Hello, this is Guillaume from Fabla Barcelona, from IAC. In fact, I'm at the FabLab still. And yes, uh, we haven't yet work on how it could connect with FabLabs.io in the details, but the truth is that we have experience building other applications that the users from the FabLab community can log in through FabLabs.io. And so that way, the, um, the child application in this case, that would be the, the one that Ivan presented could directly inherit it from your user, the FabLab you are part, the machines you have, and so all these things could be connected. But let's say there's not a roadmap, yes, but it's fully possible as uh, we have been working in both platforms, we know them well, and we took care of implementing a rich API in both sides to do these kind of connections in the future. Um. As we're into Rico, the system is not yet being tested because it will is still in development and we plan to release by the end of the Reflow project that uh, we have a one deadline uh, next June and the fully release of the software will happen in two years from now when the Reflow uh, EU project will, uh, will end. Yeah, it's a really cool concept. I'm really looking forward to seeing it work and uh, hearing the results from it. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so if there is no question, so they can move forward with the
So if so, Andrea, if you want to give an overview of. Hello, everybody. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, let me see if I see myself. Yeah, cool. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Andrea from Dynorg. Uh, we'll spend a few minutes presenting you Zen Room. Um, I have to warn you that uh, Zen Room is a uh, very, very niche kind of software tool. So um, if some of you will be interested, I, I, I try to keep the presentation as, as short as possible because for some of you, this will be just a, a alien uh, science. Uh, if some of you is interested, I'll make sure I leave you all the coordinates to get back to us and we'll be happy to answer all your questions later on uh, uh, offline. Okay, so uh, I would like to share my screen. So I think that someone needs to, yes, here we Yes, go. you are now a co-host and you can share a screen and just so you all know, Claudia is our moderator for this session. Cool. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Yeah, cool. All right, so first thing I will do, I will paste uh, the website we're looking at on, my, on, on the chat. So what is Zen Room? In a nutshell, we call it Crypto Smart Contract Executor. Uh, we used to call it Virtual Machine, but whenever you say Virtual Machine, most people think of VirtualBox. But in reality, Zen Room is a virtual machine the way the Java is. So uh, you feed it with uh, scripts and they execute the scripts and uh, the virtual machine guarantees that the, the execution will be exactly the same on every platform it runs on. And uh, it, it, the, focus of, uh, the focus application of Zenroom is cryptography meant for both blockchains or just um, whenever you need cryptography um, in, on the internet. Very, very quickly how it's built. It is written in C. So the main form that I will show you tonight, well, I, I will show you different, uh, uh, different forms and shape of Zenroom, but the, 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 main, um, um, uh, the, the main version of uh, Zenroom is a common line application running on uh, Linux, Windows, or Mac. Uh, then we have it built as libraries on Android and iOS. And very important for those who are familiar with it, we have a library built in WASM uh, that is a WebAssembly transcompilation of C code that runs both in the browser, so you can run it uh, in, in the front end of your application as well as in Node.js, so you can run it in, the, in, in a Node.js backend of your application. And we also have experimental builds that run on very, very tiny iOS chips. Uh, it's a tiny piece of software that uses very little RAM. Um, it, uh, well, one of the features is that it can do deterministic end-to-end -end encryption. So basically, you could encrypt something in your browser, then something else can happen server-side, and you can get it decrypted and signed on your phone. It does uh, a different kind of uh, cryptography using uh, different curves, as well as uh, uh, latest, well, cutting-edge technology uh, that we de define as uh, ABC, meaning attribute-based credential, and zero knowledge proof, including a version of zero knowledge proof that is used on uh, blockchain, based on the coconut paper, you have the link here, which is a paper that was written within the Decode project by the people who um, were at the time part of Chainspace and were acquired by Facebook. So the cryptography you see here uh, should be the same that you will see in, uh, in Facebook's Libra when it goes online. Last but not least, maybe for you guys, uh, uh, the most important, the most interesting feature will be that uh, Zenroom can process scripts written both in Lua, which is a, a 30 years old programming language, or as well a known Turing complete English-like domain-specific language called Zencode that uh, something we, we, we made up. 
that's been inspired by BDD, which is a form of syntax um, to do automatized testing, and LangSec, meaning language security. So it should be it should be pretty safe. So this was my very short intro. Um, let me write immediately the our web our Telegram channel. So whoever is interested, just uh, just join us here and ask us a question uh, later on. I'm going to go ahead with a uh, small demonstration of uh, how Zen Room operates. Yeah, this one. So here I'm going to show you the command line interface. If I launch Zen Room, I get this. It is telling me what version of the software I'm running. It is telling me which curve it's using. And right now it's using an elliptic curve Diffie Hellman called uh, SECP whatever. Right now it's using 299 uh, kilobytes of memory. And I could go on and write a script here, but that would take too long. So what I will do is that I will feed it with a script. I will feed it with a script that generates a key pair for asymmetric encryption. So here we're getting down into cryptography already. Anybody familiar with asymmetric encryption? If, if, if you are, please write yes in the chat so I have an idea of what direction I can go. Can you maybe try and reshare your screen because I think it's not showing what you're talking about. Is it not showing what I'm talking about? It says you are screen sharing right now so it should be yeah sometimes i think it gets a bit stuck when you try and change whatever you're sharing okay i you should see a shell window where i i'll try unshare okay your screen sharing is paused i'll stop share and i will start sharing again this one uh no hold on Screen sharing. Uh, no. Uh, there is something wrong because it allows me to share only a window, but I don't want to share a window, I want to share a whole screen. Uh, something, something changing the setup. I'm not allowed to share my screen anymore. Uh, can you share? Uh, so, hi, Pradna this side. So, uh, if, we, if it will be great if you share your file to me, I will share from this side. Say it again. Uh, I will help you with the screen sharing if you send yeah. me this file. This so is file. there any link or PDF or something? What is that? No, no, there, there is no. I have to. I have to show you a couple of websites. I, there is no. Oh. File. I need to share a whole screen. Okay, I'll try to make you host and see if that makes you, uh, allows you to uh, share full screen. Yeah. Thank you. Not yet. Not yet. We are now the host of this meeting. Uh, well, I cannot share anything yet. Uh, uh, what error it is showing? Sorry? Uh, what is the error it is showing or nothing? The, the header? Yeah. Uh, I think so it, allows, um, it allows only to share a specific windows and not a whole uh, screen. No, before I was sharing, I was sharing a, I was sharing a screen. All right, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll try with what I have and then I will switch. Okay, I, you should be seeing uh, a, a shell now, a, a, a Linux shell where I'm writing a comment. Yeah. Can you see something now? Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna generate a key pair uh, for that I'm gonna generate a key pair that you can use uh, for asymmetric encryption. I asked before, who, uh, who is familiar with uh, asymmetric encryption? 
Uh, and I guess that Rico said yes. Uh, Rico said no. Ivan said yes. Okay. If no one knows about it, I will just show it super quickly. I'm going to do Zen room minus Z keeper dot at that dot Zen. This keeper dot Zen is a script. So I'm going to show you the script in a second. This is the output. The output is a JSON object that contains a keeper that contains a private key, which is this and a public key. All right. But what I want to show you is the script itself. Because this script is written in, in Zen code. It is uh, more or less the most simplest script you can, you can do. It starts with defining a scenario. The scenario is called ECDH. It has three comments. The, in the first one, I state who I am. In the second one, I am generating a cryptographic object. In the third one, I am printing what I'm generating. Given, when, then. Okay. So this is a simple example of, uh, of Zen code. Uh, we're doing fast forward. I'm going to unshare my screen and I'm going to go back to the browser. All right, let me see. Yeah, okay. All right. Here we go. Okay, can you see my browser open on a website called apiroom.net? Yes. Cool. Let me paste. Let me paste it here as well. So this is uh, this, this is something we put online last Friday. Uh, it's, it's not launched yet. is uh, It's still very alpha, and we we are aware that it's still that it looks very ugly. Um, I'm just going to show you that uh, the same thing I did uh, using a script before, I can do it here. So I click on examples and I click on generate a keeper. The same script appears here. And if I press the play, bu play button, I'm going to have the same result. And here I have a bunch of other examples I can show you. For example, I can uh, show you how to encrypt a message using a password. This script is a little bit longer. It, it goes when I write a string, my secret word in password, and I write string, a very short but confidential message in whisper, and I write this and that, and I encrypt the secret message whisper with password, then print the secret message. When I run it, when I play it, I get this message, which is, well, this message with this header encrypted here using this password. And I, I could go on and give you other examples. Um, the, the scripts I am uh, doing, I'm using, I'm playing here. I can save them. Actually, I've already saved this one in the back end. So I'm just gonna go and look in my contracts. I have uh, two of them here. Uh, the toggle button tells me that they're online and there is a link. I click, I can click on the link and I will have my keeper generated here uh, from our backend. So this you can also try yourself. Uh, and uh, I can also, uh, we, we can also play a bit more with the contracts uh, using the Swagger. Uh, those of you who have done some web development might be familiar with it. But I can, for example, pick, pick one of those contracts. And here I can pass it some data. Uh, try it out. I can pass it some data and I can do, um, okay, I'm just gonna make a test. Let's see how it happens. Let's, let's see uh, if it works. Let's do message my very secret message. Let's see if it crashes or not. It may, it may be crashing. Well, it actually worked. 
No, it didn't work. But anyway, uh, you, you can, the, what I want to tell you is that from this window, you can create your own contract. You have uh, some of the parameters you give to the contract that you keep uh, for yourself, like the keys, and some other parameters that you can send in uh, uh, from a regular API, from regular REST API call. Uh, and using this uh, with uh, a bunch of uh, contracts, uh, doesn't want to go back, but with a bunch of contracts, let's say five or six of them, you, you can put together a cryptographic backend or a backend that does uh, some simple data manipulation. And very soon we will be able to, to, to pull a Docker file uh, that installs uh, uh, the software behind this along with the contracts and lets you uh, deploy it on uh, whatever cloud you like. Uh, there is people that wanna, that wanna join. I think I should let them in. But anyway, I think that the, the video part of my presentation is, uh, is, is, uh, is gone for now. So I don't know if there are any questions. Okay, if there are no questions, then I think I will pass uh, the, microphone, the microphone over. Uh, if anyone is curious, uh, is, there, is there a message? Eddie Skaljic, when can we expect the, the deployment to be beta? Um, this week, but if you like, we can give you early access. So if, if you're curious, then join us on the Telegram channel and uh, you can follow real time. Can you please uh, make me co-host again? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, do I, do I host, have host, yeah, you need to give me the host uh, uh, so that I can continue the flow of the, if something happens. You, you are Milena, right? No, I am Fabix Live email, um, the one that has no co-host. Uh, I'm lost, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, you can make a Fabix Live email. That it's that's the name on, on there. Can you can you make that host? You just by clicking on the right. I now now I cannot do it, so I cannot explain you how it's done. Hey. It's on the setting. Yeah, Plain but I, 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 let me stop the sharing. Okay. Uh, now I can see more more people. Let me see who's unmuted. Fab, Fab X Live email. Yes, make host. Please. Make host. I believe that I've done that. Yes, thank you. You can continue. Uh, yes, so. Uh, yeah, well, that, that was that was my presentation. If anybody has uh, questions, uh, uh, one uh, Telegram. One aspect is that um, maybe just uh, we can tell you shortly how this can connect directly to uh, Reflow S. Is that, for example, we said uh, that Reflows allows to create and perform a lot of different economic activities together. For example, I can exchange. A resource from me to um, another Fab Labs, and the Fab Labs can use um, 3D laser cutter of um, another uh, hack lab, or they can exchange uh, one material for uh, money or from uh, another kind of uh, uh, reward in uh, in exchange, and all these kind of economic events that includes agreement. Uh, include kind of uh, governance between themselves can be secured through this kind of uh, smart contract. So we will use Zero for two uh, main reasons in Reflow OS. One is to allow that all the flow of communication, all the data that flows from server to server are encrypted directly on the client. So also the server will know anything about the data because they will store it already encrypted. Uh, but also to secure the smart contract, so to ensure that um, who is performing an exchange has the right of performing such operation, or for example, has enough money in case it is a currency transaction, 
or the agreement that two parties did for uh, an exchange is respected by both the two parties. There is several experimentation in dealing with the agreement, conversation in action, and this kind of uh, smart contract, and we will test several of them in, uh, in Reflow. Uh, there is a question by Kate. Can this smart contract be applied to other uh, areas? OS design, for example, what do you mean by OS design, Kate? Ah, open source design. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Open source design doesn't really mean much, but yes, uh, we have um, we have a number of pilots already. We have uh, code in production in different places. Um, we have some code in some backend, some code in some mobile application, and we even have some code running in some IoT devices. There are another question. I'm, I'm seeing some people from Reflow Pilots around. Maybe you want to share something. I will not say any name here because <laughs> not that nice, but yeah, if you guys want to say something on how your pilot cities are doing to uh, connect the Reflow as in the actions, feel free to do so. Check names, Milana. Check names. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> So we still have half an hour. Let's use this time to explore a little bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, uh, there is a one question in chat from Adam Bond. Oh, Adam, one of us uh, is explaining. Uh, is replying to the previous uh, question. I have a question. Um, can I ask it like this <laughs> instead of in the chat? Yeah. Um, I have a question about how Makerspaces and Fab Labs can participate at this point because I know that you have, um, I know that you have pilots coming up. But how does this actually integrate with the practices that a Fab Lab or a Makerspace does on a day to day in terms of do you know would this in require training for fab labs or maker spaces would this be require onboarding in the lab how can this be integrated with um the other practices that fab labs and maker spaces do and are you actually doing that testing in the project as to how it actually integrates from maybe like a socio-cultural perspective like yeah or education perspective um yeah likely uh within uh, different pilots there is there are also fab lab and or textile labs uh, etc so we are um, planning together about features development and how to integrate uh, such infrastructure in their daily routine and trying to tailor our uh, development to based on their needs also and one thing that we are doing to try to avoid big error at the end of the project is that we are delivering um, an MVP first uh, by which Fab Labs and uh, several pilots can start experimenting with it. The first deliverable will not be a huge 
complex economic uh, network, but will allow to perform basic uh, offers and needs. So in this way, uh, pilots can start knowing uh, what, what is happening, what are the requests and the availability within their network, within the stakeholders that are the participants of the network. And given that they can start addressing different set of questions that then we can explore in another uh, deliverable, in another milestone. Because as I said, in the first stage, we want to discover the network and we want to give the possibility to pilots to explore their network. So knowing uh, themselves, knowing the uh, availability and the uh, request. Once this is done and once analysis are performed also together with other partners like material flow analysis based on the actual offers and needs or community engagement outside the, the network, we can proceed with maybe uh, augmenting the complexity of such network. For example, um, all of what I say to you, I uh, narrate to you these days, today, is about performing economic activities, but th there is an upper la layer that is even maybe more important of only performing economic activities that is about coordinating. So making plan of um, supply chain and creating uh, recipe and uh, deploying design of supply chain that then can be coordinated through the network. Of course, we cannot already deploy such complex architecture without first uh, discussing and working tight with the community to understand how a network behave and how pilots behave with this social and economical architecture together. So this is what we are planning in, uh, in several steps. So can I, hello, can you hear me? Ciao. Uh, so I'm Constantino from Milano. I'm participating to this workshop uh, via mobile. So <laughs> tell me if something is uh, wrong. But uh, so um, try to asking uh, the, to ask uh, the the question about how it could be implemented in a, in a fab lab. Uh, maybe it is better to say something about uh, how we are trying to implement this uh, technology and this uh, series this stack of technology in the pilot. And so as uh, Milena said before, very briefly, every city decided uh, a team of uh, so uh, an area of circular uh, economy uh, in order to implement this. Uh, and for example, in Milan, we, we, are, we have chosen the food chain and the food, uh, so the, the food chain, the value chain of food in the city uh, and trying to implement, of course, uh, circular economy, uh, circular economy uh, value chain using th this technology. For example, if you think about uh, uh, a trash, let's say trash, uh, that can be uh, become a new material for one process, uh, uh, you get the idea. For example, the coffee that is, a, that is a leftover in bars can be used to create uh, humus and, and biomaterial and so on and so forth. So uh, tracking that ex exchange, for example, using the smart contract uh, that is embedded in this plus the network, the network uh, activities, uh, so the, the human exchange of word and information, uh, we can, let's say, track the value in the chain. And so it, it can be very useful, uh, not only in a market, for example, that, that is the place uh, that we are uh, trying to implement the pilot, but also in a fab lab. So for, for example, the, the value chain of, uh, I don't know, creating a, a decoration for the Christmas tree by laser cutting is uh, materials, uh, laser cutting, uh, assembling, packaging, uh, and that, that's it. So if you apply this action, uh, and if you track this action, uh, through the um, Reflow OS, you can uh, track 
the value exchange that can, that can be also monetized in between actors or agent, that is the, the word that we are using. And this is a linear value chain. If there is some circular uh, uh, in the value chain is a circular economy, so it can be track uh, also waste material. For example, I don't know if there is someone from Paris. In Paris, uh, they are, and of course, uh, if uh, there is someone, he can pull. Yes. But in Paris, oh, me and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Constantino. Um, you can yeah, yeah. you can explain the. I, I can explain a bit. Um, so this is mean from uh, Fat City Grand Paris. We are participating to to WeFlow, uh, and and has uh, Constantino just said we are us focus on wood. Uh, so wood actually is maybe a better example for Fab Lab is because we are making. Uh, in our actually fab lab in uh, in Woma, we're doing a lot of woodwork, so we have a lot of um, leftover. But just imagine, like if you can actually uh, scan it and actually tracking, and then also automate 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 a solution with with some standards, then you can actually do a, um, you can just do a circular uh, strategy for waste wood that we generate. And that's the idea of what we're doing now is like how we f we flow OS is actually this this um, this uh, layer of data that we will follow and track all the the, the pieces or the elements that we have in our um, uh, storage. So that's what we experiment now. We are we're developing a kind of a smart storage um, approach. And what we try to do is like to to base this 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 uh, the database on Reflow OS, as it will be then shared through Europe with the different pilots, and that will be the way to actually exchange, which is you know how actually you, you what you're doing locally could be shared uh, globally. That's um, that's how what what we try to do. So I was mentioning to the that. Um, to Wico that we're doing the the reuse factory, and this is part of it. Is like how do you do it into physical strategy, but also digital strategy, and how actually you loop that, and you you, you create tools that could be replicable and shareable. And Min, can um, I'm just wondering because I mean on a fab lab scale and on the daily operations of a fab lab, what extra kind of effort or what extra or additional um, actions have to be taken to actually onboard your fab lab to be able to work in this way? Because I, I guess, and I, I don't want to speak on behalf of all the fab labs, but they're not necessarily, you know, super methodical always. And, or maybe some of them are, but I guess these practices are a little bit different to, you know, That's you really need to learn them. That's correct. So what what we were thinking is like what what is um, taking a lot of time is actually to index or characterize the the, the wood waste, and the idea is like to create like a, an open source device that will actually take the 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 element and it will characterize for you and that will be inform the database, and so which will make actually more robust the database. So that's what we are trying. We're working also on this device, uh, which is called Dimensioners. It's a French word for that, um, that we made it for it. But the idea is like, how do you create um, this to create a community, like a bit like precious plastic, as you all know. And then you share the, the, the way to do it. And ev if everyone uses it, everyone will, will uh, feed the database and it will be then natural in the, in the Fab Lab because I, um, I think all of you who run Fab Labs, you, you know that you, you, you always try to save piece uh, because you think you will reuse it, but you forget because you put it in stack. But if you have access of all the elements you have in the Fab Labs and you have an algorithm, you, like if you, then you need to do something and it will retrace what you have in your stocks. But it will also know what your neighborhood will have, like the Fab Labs next, like close to my Fab Labs. And I will know and access with storage as well. 
then I can actually then create from all these pieces and having like a project made out of all this wasted and, and like, you know, materials that sleep in the Fab Labs. Is it the same system for wood as it is for food or it is for textiles or what have so, you? Or are you developing different <clears throat> ones for each application? Yeah, the approach actually is, is a bit different for each because they have different focus. But what we can say is some of us are more close, like for example, textile, plastic and wood has dealing with materials. Um, food is a bit different. And then you have like a, a hot water waste and also energy, which are Cluj and Berlin. And they, they, they have like a different approach. The idea is like, at the end of this, this project that we will have like a bunch of tools that will work for all. And we see how we can actually apply what, we, what each pilot develop to our own cities. So it's... And, uh, yes, and another, uh, another thing to say is that uh, so as you know be, um, from the presentation of Ivan, the, um, the, the software is, uh, uh, let's say, in alpha right now. So they are, they are uh, deploying, uh, deploying it for us. And so the, the, the ideation phase, uh, we, so we are in the phase of concept. Uh, so how to use this, this technology will be the next two years. Uh, but of course, uh, yes, there will be some example. But uh, another example that I that probably even uh, can explore a little bit more is, uh, let's say, a time exchange uh, that is very common uh, in, a, in, a, in a space like a, a fab lab, for example. I will make this uh, laser capping and I will, and uh, I, I give you back uh, some, uh, I don't know, uh, material for 3D printing. So these kind of uh, economical activities that can be tracked uh, in many ways can be also tracked uh, using a platform like this. Uh, I'm talking about Reflow OS in order to apply a governance that you decide. So for example, uh, you, the, the governance could be, you can just barter time uh, that is machine or, uh, or human time. Or you can decide that, that uh, you can monetize that time that, that you give. So the Reflow OS as a stack, it can be applied to a lot of uh, different things. In Reflow OS, uh, we are focused on material flows, uh, but it, 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 can, uh, it, it, it can track uh, actually whichever value flows that you want. And so yeah. we are talking about doing it, uh, let's say manually, in the case that you submit uh, an information that, uh, that an action that you have made through a, 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 a web application, or it can be a device that, uh, for example, with a badge, you can swap the badge and you can confirm that you have made that, that action. Ivan? Yeah, I totally agree with you also. Something that we didn't discuss uh, today, but is a fundamental point that you mentioned, is all the discussion about the value. Because uh, what is generated having all this data stored in uh, value flows and con in, um, in reflow and connected together, is that you can start understand and also discuss about what is the value that a network generate. How do we want to measure the value? And also, how do we want to distribute the values among participants? So Reflow, other than being a way to manage resources exchange, et cetera, is a tool to experiment and discuss and put in discussion uh, your um, theories, uh, theories and experimentation about governance. 
and shaping new governance uh, model and new economic models that can uh, create new ways or um, of distributing values across a network um, and resourcing itself. And for example, the time banking example, it's something that it would be awesome to, to experiment together. Uh, and time banking that can also be very similar to an alternative currencies, a simple mutual credit uh, currencies. So all this kind of plugin that can be created on top of the core Reflow OS, it's something that it will come in a second way because it's something that will be asked and needed by a pilot or not. But it will be something really interesting to, to explore together and where fab labs or this kind of communities uh, more operative on the ground can be super useful. So another example that I can make uh, about uh, so why a fab lab is uh, is can use this, this technology meaning that uh, so it can be implemented in many in many ways but of course uh, we are also interested in uh, create automation in this uh, value chain so Min is working on a device. Uh, and a device that can be useful in many situations of uh, circular exchange. For example, it can be just a, um, a Libra, a Libra that can measure the weight of a pre precious uh, trash, can, can be a device, so an IoT device that can post directly on the ledger on or on the network the value of that uh, of that part and so it can digitize a material and if uh, at that material there is connected uh, an exchange for example or a usage uh, a person can find that material on the network and can deal with the owner of the material an exchange uh, using uh, Reflow OS, the web application, for example. Ivan, can you elaborate on that? Or uh, if you, if he's... I didn't follow the, the conclusion. So can you... <laughs> no, no problem. Also, Guillermo, it, it, if it's here, it can it can speak about uh, the user interface. What a, what a user can can do through a web uh, application. No, but maybe it's not here. Uh, this is something that maybe I can uh, talk uh, briefly about. And because the experience that we will, um, I'm, that will probably be like in the client, it will be something very similar to a social network. So the same experience that you may have encountered using uh, Facebook or Twitter or Mastodon, etc. It will be really similar to what you will experience also in Reflow as being able to sign up and or log in through a web a form. And then you will have this mixed uh, interface between a social network where you will have your own feed and you can reply to other activities or comments or add uh, new comments. But you can also perf perform exchange, for example, being able to publish an advertising like uh, an offer. This offer will finish on the same feed where the discussion uh, happen. And so other users that are scrolling the web interface can see these offers or needs together with other uh, social activities and can interact with it. Um, for example, Facebook now has a kind of smart input in which you can decide which kind of content you want to create. You can create a classic comment or you can create a poll for voting or you can uh, do other things. 
and think uh, theoretically about the same thing, but rather than having poll, you can have offers and needs with specific fields uh, related to offers and needs. So for example, you can add um, an offers, then you can add uh, geolocalization where you want to post this offer. If you want to post the offer in a specific group, uh, that can be your own fab labs or can be public to other uh, uh, network to other fab labs or uh, clubs to to see and reach and if you want to set a due date for example these uh, offers will finish uh, after the next month or not uh, and etc so the um, look and feel and the user experience should be a uh, mix between a classic social network and uh, something more uh, economic but um, pretty uh, easy to use, of course, it, and it will be responsive. Uh, so you will be able to use by your from your smartphone as well. So, so, so the thing is that one of the question uh, as a fab lab is that, is uh, so probably a naive question could be something like, uh, but why are you using such a com complex stack to do that? Uh, and and, and I, 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 I try to um, reply to this question, to my question, meaning that, uh, so for example, if you want to create a network that, that is uh, uh, an instance uh, in order to exchange time hour between uh, two different fab labs, uh, of course, uh, we can federate our uh, our instance if we have uh, rules that uh, that that are uh, deals, for example, between fab labs. Uh, that uh, that is, uh, if you work for free in a fab lab, you can use our uh, physical resources. And one of the reason is this. And of course, uh, when there are two two instances that needs to communicate together. Crypto could be very useful, <laughs> if not mandatory, and uh, and things like that. And of course, uh, the word smart contract is very interesting uh, because, uh, of course, uh, if we add the blockchain, uh, you can exchange in a space uh, that is uh, that is uh, very, let's say, safe uh, to get in. Uh, because you know you know the rule and you can trust uh, you can trust the blockchain and and not one uh, provider of the service for example yeah, uh, there is also um, a situation in which you want to trust the blockchain and other situation in which instead you want to create task, uh, trust between participants so you don't have to put trust in an algorithm, but you want to enforce and empower the trust between the participants of the network, so human. And the interesting things will be discovered where, when you want to trust the ledger and uh, the proof of works or other kind of uh, proof of stake. And when instead you want to privilege trust between and empower trust between uh, participants. So for example, I think global currencies will be a case in which uh, blockchain will be handy or if for example fab labs will implement their own currency um, instead other situation maybe will be irrelevant to to use a uh, blockchain of sort so another another interesting features uh, to to this to to work on uh, in my opinion uh, is the uh, is the privilege uh, that you can give to another to another subscriber of your feed. Uh, for example, in some cases, of course, uh, all the information of a, of a material that I'm owning and that I want to offer I need to be, uh, let's say, readable uh, to, to, to who wants that piece or of material. But in some cases, uh, you don't want to give the ability to the third party to see the global uh, uh, result of this uh, value exchange. So or your in own inventory. Case, or your own inventory. Or you, in, in, so if you're a, a 
seeing uh, this kind of exchange uh, from the Fab Lab manager, for example, uh, um, perspective, of course, the Fab Lab manager can see many transactions or depending of, on, on what the rules of the community are. And, uh, and of course, in this layer, you can, uh, one of the things, uh, so looking at the various value stream uh, is trying not to logistically, logistically optimize uh, uh, the thing, uh, but uh, uh, meaningfully optimize the things. So, so for example, you can, you can see that there are transactions between members uh, that uh, can be swapped to mm -hmm. to networking or uh, to 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 create a meaningful relationship between uh, between people so and 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 the the technology that we are using that it's so complex uh, uh, can can give us also to so the, this kind of the level of detail to be chosen and uh, and of course, uh, because we are talking with, with, with municipality and stakeholders uh, that are uh, layered uh, as a community, so the community can decide which layer of uh, visibility can give to, to other people or to, to other stakeholders. So it's, it's pretty interesting and very, very, very broad but uh, super interesting. And uh, as, as, as uh, Ivan said before, we are following uh, the, so Dine as organization worked in uh, the code in Barcelona and they applied part of this technology in other, uh, in other context uh, that are not uh, physical material flows uh, in circular economy. And uh, also in that case, uh, the, the the example are interesting. Just a very quick reply to, to this, Constantino. One, one first features that can enable what you are saying, also if not cover all of your needs, but can be a glimpse into, is the ability to create uh, different groups. So defining different groups can work, like defining different circles where your uh, product, your resource, your data should be shared. So it can be a circle with all the Fab Labs, another circle with only the certain specific uh, members of the Fab Labs, other with visitors and guests, etc. So this kind of circles can be a first hint into this kind of uh, moderation and... Uh, cool. But yeah, discussion are needed, more discussion are needed on this. Yes, yes, uh, this is... Uh... <laughs> super specific uh, point. Okay, we are on time. I think we have just one minute left. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for everybody who joined the, the session. Uh, just sent a message again to the in the chat that we, will keep, we can keep the conversation in our forum that's a public. Uh, discourse forum. You have just had to register there. And yeah, hopefully we'll be sharing some advances on Reflow as soon. I don't know even if you want to say something else just to finish it. I'm fine. Good. <laughs> so thank you very uh, so much, everyone. And yeah, enjoy the